All right, everyone, get hype. This is a surprisingly exciting topic. You see, since 2004, one thing has remained the same, the default key bindings. And that means that most people, well, they don't play a version of World of Warcraft that's nice to play. And that's why so many people are clickers. Now, you may have tried binding masses of abilities, and if you did, you probably ran into problems, you know, uncomfortable combos, buttons you'd forget, this whole big setup that just didn't work for you. With today's video, you can stop wrestling with the game, and you can control your character exactly as you need to. And this is not about getting more DPS or whatever. No, if you play a video game and the controls of that game suck, that game's going to be less fun. And that is what today's video is all about. We are going to make World of Warcraft more fun by helping you control it like an absolute god. And that's of course with today's sponsor, the drop.com enter keyboard. The link is down below. This is literally my favorite new keyboard. Like, absolutely. Do you know what's even better? This is their entry level model. I have never seen a $90 keyboard have this good, like, build quality. It is so solid. Got this big aluminium backplate. I mean, just look at it. It's so nice. Um, and the backplate's mega important for things like the actual, you know, feel of using your keys. And man, those key switches. So you can get them in the linear Gatorons or you can get them in the Halo Trues, which are a more tactile one as opposed to linear. And those Halo Trues, I think they're my favorite key switches yet. Like, I hit 100 words per minute for the first time ever within the first week of using this board. So this one gels with me real good. Also, it's a 10 keyless format, right? That is my favorite format for gaming because it actually gives you more mouse space. It's smaller in your desk. So that's my favorite format. And this is my favorite board in that format. It is my daily driver. Also, the keycaps, they're double shot. That means they are durable. The legends won't wear away. And of course, if you want keycaps, just go to drop. They sell so many and they're really cool. Now, this board itself is available in three colors of aluminium and it's got adjustable LED backlights. Over 1K have been sold. The ratings are super high, 4.5. And of course, 30 day, no questions asked returns policy. This is an awesome board. The link is down below in that video description. I love it. I think you'll love it too. And with that said, let's get going. Your first step in this journey should be to rebind the Blizzard defaults. Use A and D to strafe left and right. Doing this frees up Q and E. And Q and E are two of the best buttons on your keyboard for gaming. So yes, do that and stop keyboard turning. You can do so far easier with your mouse. Now this can take a little while getting used to if you've never done it before, but start now and you'll be a natural before Shadowlands comes out. Now, some players recommend unbinding the S key because backpedaling is slow. Gotta be real with you though, I kinda disagree. Sometimes making a minor adjustment by backpedaling can be useful, especially if you are a tank. Now other nearby keys for that hand are incredible. Things like Z, X, C, and V. And by default, they are bound to Blizzard functions like nameplates or sheathing your weapon, something you'll never do in combat. Now, sure, control C to access your character pane or alt R to reply to a whisper, that might feel like a bit of a mild inconvenience, but being able to use C and R in combat will make your gameplay feel so much nicer, so smooth and creamy in the long run. So feel out which keys you can comfortably reach on your current keyboard using, of course, your three big fingers and your thumb, while of course keeping around the WASD keys so you can move about the place. Now, realistically, you're going to need somewhere between eight and 12 of those buttons depending on your class. Now, the more variety you can get across your fingers, the better. But hey, if you've got small hands, don't worry, it'll be just fine. Now, for most people, this is going to be the likes of these keys, R, E, Q, F, V, and then one through four on your keyboard. Those are ones that are very comfortable for me, but your mileage may vary, and don't worry if it does. Then next up, we've got modifier keys. Now, they will basically just give you more options with the same number of core keys. They'll also reduce travel time, which is pretty sweet. They'll also then reduce the strain caused by, you know, reaching far away on the keyboard. And that strain can really do you in the long run. So using at shift, control, and alt, 12 good buttons can actually multiply all the way up to 48. Now, personally, I use shift and alt and using alt would make sense because I use Macs at work with their keyboards, but whatever works for you. Now, some combinations will just feel bad to use. I mean, 
Try hitting Alt and 4 or Control and Z while moving. You'll find that some of them don't work, but don't worry, most of them do. And that's basically how to get the most out of your keyboard hand. Now, if you want to get real nerdy with me, then throw your favorite combos on a spreadsheet. And don't worry, we have a spreadsheet tool coming up made just for you later in today's video. Okay, next up, your mouse. Mouse buttons are exceptional, they're so nice. Uh, most modern mice have got at least a forwards and a backwards button that you can use, but many gaming mice have got many more, and you can use them for so many different things. Some people like using their mouse buttons for emergencies, like say, lay on hands or divine shield. Other people though use them for modifiers, which I always found a bit hard to use to be honest, but then other people, like myself, use them for rotational abilities that can get really spammy, like say, using demon's bite. I find it really nice to have those abilities far away from the hand that's actually moving my character, so that might work for you. And really the goal here is comfort. Comfort is just so important for your combat abilities. I mean, long, repeated World of Warcraft sessions carry a genuine risk of strain. And what if you're maybe a writer or a programmer or something in your day job? You're gonna do in your hands and that will suck in the long run. So comfort is key. Also, you'll want to reduce the like risk of actually making mistakes, right? I mean, the first accidental lay on hands, that's an embarrassment. But the second one is a problem. And having a good, comfortable setup will allow you to make less mistakes, and that's going to mean you're less stressed. And if you're less stressed, you'll have more fun. Next, here's our list of suggested buttons, just real clear and simple for you. Of course, your mileage may vary, but this is what we suggest. One through four are super easy to hit, as are Q, E, R, and F. Now, for many people, these will work great as a simple group of eight for your core combat abilities. Then Z, X, C, and V are also prime keybinds, maybe for some of your less common abilities, but ones you still need access to. And then if you have got dexterous digits, then maybe you can use the likes of 5, T, G, and B. So there you go. That's a bunch of buttons. Now that you've got a feel for what buttons you can actually use, let's cover what abilities to put on them. And this really does matter. And once you get this right, you're going to feel so in control. And the principle here is really simple. Put things where they make sense. And you'll see that as we go through. Your core combat abilities should be the easiest and most comfortable to press. I mean, if you're regularly using an ability bound to shift and five, but you're never pressing the F key, maybe you want to rethink that. So using the previous example of easy keys, that's one through four and Q, E, R, and F, uh, you can use those as your regular combat abilities. The kinds of things you're just pressing, you know, every couple of seconds. Now for abilities that are more on the time scale of 45 seconds and above, you can use a modifier on those buttons. Then, of course, there's a category of abilities that are semi-regular, things like cooldowns, you know, a three minute cooldown. Personally, I like to put those on shift one through four. Now there is one caveat here. Now that many cooldowns are off the global cooldown because of the Shadowlands changes, you want to ensure that you can press things at the same time. As an example, binding Avenging Wrath to shift plus one, but Wake of Ashes to Q, well, that would add some unnecessary delay because both of those buttons rely on your ring finger. Now, this principle, of course, extends beyond attacks. It extends into your defensives, your movement abilities, your CCs, and your interrupts. Now, to hop back to our binding example, the likes of C and V are perfect for, say, an interrupt, an emergency button, or a major cooldown. The reason why is they can be hit by your thumb instantly at any time without overlap. I mean, seriously, thumbs, they've been pretty awesome for the human race in general, and they'll be pretty damn good for your World of Warcraft gameplay too. Now, this sounds pretty simple, but there's actually more. There's so much more. There are so many buttons. Where do we put everything else? Well, to do that, and this is the real, like, god mode power move, we're going to talk about categorization and muscle memory. Okay, look, it's not as complicated as it sounds. If you follow this, here's what's awesome. You'll be able to play multiple specs better and with complete ease. It's going to be so good for your WoW gameplay. Muscle memory and instinct are what drive our second-to-second -second gameplay, right? 
In practice though, this just means putting similar buttons together. I mean, let's just say your class has got two different CC abilities. Well, you could put those on the C key and then also on Shift C. Let's think about say interrupts and displacements. You could put those on V and Shift V. And that basically means that you'll always know if you want to stop a cast, then you'll have a dedicated button for that. You'll always know, no matter what you're playing, that the V key, as an example, will be your interrupt. And after a few days of playing, this will become muscle memory, and it will mean that your interrupts and your stuns just come out with no effort. And this is so good at making you a better, more comfortable, and less stressed player. And this approach will also help you shift between different classes with absolute ease. Do you want to use your stun totem as a shaman or your stun as a, uh, say, a warlock? Well, if they're both on shift V, you don't have to think about it. And the same goes for, say, it being your, uh, say, your interrupt. And what's great here is that you'll be developing the same muscle memory with every single spec that you play. So all your skills will be transferable. And that's really good. It'll make you a better player. Now, the hardest thing to bind is really class utility buttons, but categorizing them and aiming for some consistency can help. Because that's the thing, class utility buttons. That means something different for every class and spec that you play. Now, Matt, who led the effort on this video, made a really cool, I, I love stuff like this, color-coded spreadsheet for this purpose across a few classes. Now, it's personally suited to him, but we think it could really help you along the same lines, and that's why we're going to link a version of it in the description of this video. You may even be able to plan out your own keybinds for all your different things with this spreadsheet. Now, for Matt, this approach actually lets him play around with basically any of the 36 specs comfortably. Even if he's got no idea where a button is, it's usually going to fall into a, a group of four so that it can be found at a glance or easily pressed. For a quick reference, a quick example here, Shift, Q, E, R, and F, for him, are combat utility. Now, what does that mean? Well, when he's playing a paladin, that means it's his blessings. When he's playing a rogue, that means tricks of the trade, shroud of concealment, and poison knife. Basically, for him, it's that whole whatever a class can do group. And it's consistent across every single class. It's the same kind of key bindings. And basically, once you combine categorization, consistency, and muscle memory, you will find yourself playing the game in a way that is so much smoother than before. So, the principles for you to keep in mind while key binding are as follows. Number one, Press keys that are comfortable while playing. It's not about being a better player or doing more DPS. It's about having a better, more comfortable experience. Two, find your abilities and items so that uh, the things that you want the most and use the most are the easiest to press. Three, also bind abilities that are similar close together. Bind them similarly, either uh, on your keyboard or in a way that makes sense to you. I always use the R key for my interrupts, personally. Then four, don't be afraid to cannibalize Blizzard's default bindings. They really aren't that good. Throw them out, do something better with them. Five, keep playing with your keybinds until they are second nature and muscle memory kicks in. And the thing is, if you follow these principles, you will find yourself being a much more confident player, especially as you find yourself with new abilities, items, and perhaps even new classes and specs in the Shadowlands. The previous principles are the same in basically any keyboard and mouse, and we would definitely recommend picking up a decent mouse with as many buttons either as possible or that you feel comfortable with, and then a keyboard that feels nice to actually play with. Having a keyboard that is comfortable and fun to press buttons on is really, really great. And I think that's more important than having some massive board with lots of macro keys that's super expensive. I mean, I don't even have macro keyboards that I particularly recommend for World of Warcraft anyway. Now, if you do have some smart uses for macro keys, of course, do let us know. Then also, MMO mice. They are something you can consider. I personally find them quite comfortable but it's not something you absolutely need, even though I would say that sometimes having that many buttons can be a godsend. But you don't need one. Just get a mouse that's got a few more buttons than normal, use those buttons well, and you will be real comfy. 
Then for keyboards, if you are going into the mechanical realm, say via the Enter that was the sponsor of today's video, then for gaming, a lot of people do like linear keys, but basically I would say do a little bit of research on the various types of key switches and try to get one that's nice and comfortable for you. Maybe even get a tester kit. For a lot of people, they use, you know, sort of mushy membrane keys, and that can actually really, when you're doing lots of button presses, it can wear out your hand and it can cost some RSI. So I would recommend trying to get a look at a really good sort of price performance ratio keyboard. So those are the principles covered. Follow them and you will be so much better and so much more happy. That's how you should be handling keybinds though, at a very broad sort of strokes level. But what about everything else? Because there is so much else. Well, the good news is we have a whole ton of tips and tricks that are going to make your button pressing life easier. And that matters because playing World of Warcraft actually, when you think about it, is button pressing. When discussing the principles, we mostly kept our focus on combat. So what about everything else? Well, mounting and auto running are both very, very common things in the game. So bind them comfortably, right? Both me and Matt put auto run as the click of our mouse wheel. He then binds mounting up to his mouse while I bind it to shift and space. I just find that's a very comfortable one. I mean, you're using a keyboard, you're typing, you're hitting shift and space, well, you're hitting shift a lot and space a lot. So that's kind of nice for me. Now, the best that I can really say here is just to take a look at Matt's spreadsheet. There's so much there. There are tons of buttons that are worth having bound for ease of use that you can kind of forget about all the things you can do there. And this does include really handy things like engineer enchants, boss and zone abilities, utility items, food, drink, and a whole bunch more. Having dedicated binds for these that are really comfortable for you can just make your whole gameplay experience smoother. You know, you're spending less time rummaging around looking for things. Now, one thing that you will notice from this sheet is that a lot of things can be handled by one add-on, and that add-on is called Opie. And now that I've mentioned that, let's talk about add-ons, macros, and tools. For add-ons, there are a few that can really help you out here. Opie is the big one. Oh, it's so good. It allows you to use one key and then a quick mouse movement to bring up like a radial menu to uh, select like any number of abilities or items or whatever you want. Now, I would not suggest using it for combat, but it's seriously fantastic for like everything else. You can throw so many things on it. This is how Matt handles basically everything that's not combat. We're going to have a full guide on it soon, and you can also see it in the action RPG WoW video that um, I did ages ago. So Opie, big, big recommend. Then also there's Click. This one can help massively, but it won't be useful for everyone because it's mostly used for mousing over unit frames. It's basically hard set binds that are independent of action bars that's all designed for mouse overs depending on your target. And this is actually how loads of healers handle mouse over heals, and it can actually replace help harm macros, which we'll cover shortly. Basically, right, imagine if you want to press the one key on an ally to heal or the one key on a target to attack them. You can do that with click with basically very little fuss. Okay, that brings us to macros. And uh, there's a sort of three basic uses we've got here and there will be a link to sample macros for all that we talk about down below for you to use. Okay, the first is for having single actions to use an array of items. Sounds kind of confusing, but basically this will just stop you messing around with bars. Uh, you can actually just have a macro that will use the first item that you have available in a list. So imagine this, right? A macro that will use a health stone if you have one or a health potion if you do not. So rather than fiddling around thinking, oh dear, I need health in my character right now. Where, you know, what button do I hit? Well, with this, you just have one macro and whether, you know, if you have a health stone, it'll use that. If you've got a potion, it'll use that. But the thing is, I need more health quickly is now one button instead of multiple. Things like that can be super handy. The second case is to have one button to use modifiers to do something else. Now, this can be used to keep a clean screen um, free of icons if you are, say, on the default UI by basically rolling multiple buttons into one. Or you could use it to, say, specifically target uh, specific allies or enemies. This is a really good example, right? You could have it so that if you press the C key, it will stun your target. Or you could have it so that pressing Shift C will cast that same stun, but at your focus target. 
that can be really useful. Imagine you're a hunter. Maybe the C key will cast misdirection on your pet, but shift C will cast it on your tank. That can be really useful, brings them all into one button. Then the last, and this is a really exciting one, and that is help harm macros. These are so cool. Basically, they're conditional targeting that can help healers save so much action bar space and keybinds. And this is important now more so than ever because healers are at the very least expected to do DPS in their downtime or if they're paladins or monks, well, actually do damage as a part of their healing kit. Same goes for the disc priests. And this can leave them with a lot of buttons, but with proper mouse over help harm macros, you are saved, okay? As an example, you can get a macro that uh, means, basically, that if you are mousing over an enemy, it will show Crusader Strike. Or if you're mousing over an ally, it will show Holy Light. That's so good. It's basically revolutionary for healers, to put it lightly. So if you're a healer, you have to try out Help Our Macros. They are so good. Okay. Wow. I think that might be it. I think that's our keybinding guide done. If you actually follow this, you're going to have a way more comfortable World of Warcraft experience. I know it's kind of boring, but seriously, right? This is making the game have really good controls. In any other game, if the controls weren't good, you'd be frustrated, you wouldn't be as good, and you'd stop. With World of Warcraft, a lot of people just make do with really bad controls, but it doesn't have to be that way. So, the key takeaways are pretty easy, and you can take them into the game right now. One. Use buttons that are comfortable and easy to press. Two, put abilities that you press most often or need in emergencies on the easiest to press buttons. Three, put all of your abilities into groups, either close on the keyboard or in a way that makes sense to you. And then do that consistently across all classes so the same muscle memory works for everything that you play. Next, destroy Blizzard's default key bindings. They were not that good in 2004 and they're even worse in 2020. And finally, play with keybinds until they are entirely natural to you. So, hopefully this helps you when you go into Shadowlands. This is uh, actually part one of a very extensive uh, sort of slate of upcoming content that we've got about how to maximize your experience. Not maximize your DPS or something like that, but to actually just make it so you enjoy WoW more. You'll enjoy WoW more if you've got great UI and great controls. You know, MMOs like they're so customizable in their UIs that they get away with not having really that well-designed ones by default. So that's what we want to fix. Okay, pressing buttons is covered now. Next, we're going to talk about how the game actually shows you what's going on. So stay tuned for our UI video. Thank you very much for watching and check out the Enter keyboard on drop.com. A big thanks to them for sponsoring this keyboard. Seriously, making more niche types of content like this super possible. Thank you to them. And that's it. I really hope you found this video useful and I will see you next time.